Hi, it's Monday night. George, are you there somewhere? I'm here. All right. Having a little bit of video trouble tonight, and uh, George is in Boulder, so if he needs to pipe in, I'll just mouth the words for him. Anyway, our guest tonight is Dan Necktrab, or whatever however his name is pronounced. We're going to figure that out. That's the big mystery tonight. Uh, also, we've got a little bit on uh, some tech update stuff, and we're going to talk about isolation, like in this this booth here. Why you need isolation, even if you're in a closet or wherever it is you are. We'll talk about that. But uh, Dan Necktrab's a, uh, uh, does promo and trailer and all that other stuff. Narration. Narration. We're going to talk all about that. So stay tuned. We're coming right up here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2Gogo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. The VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem, and Dan Leonard. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. You know, if you're coming into the super secret uh, clubhouse here, you're going to have to come through the jungle of tomatoes. You know, that was shot when there was just little tiny things of tomatoes there. Now it's like taking over the backyard. So if you need some tomatoes, we're going to have quite a few of them. Anyway, um, George, you are in Boulder. Are you? George? Sorry about that. A phone call came in right when you were trying to talk. <laughs> Fabulous. I'm using my phone to join you on the show tonight. Oh, and well, I'm okay. But, on my phone. Yes, well, we're... Apparently, when somebody calls, it overrides the call, the ah. Zoom. So, sorry about that. Well, turn that off. Anyway, uh, so you're in Boulder. I'm here in, Buff in Buffalo. Cripes. I haven't been in Buffalo for three weeks. <laughs> three years. <laughs> this, is, this is fascinating. <laughs> anyway, our guest tonight is Dan Nactrab. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, we're going to talk about promo and narration and trailers and all the cool stuff that he does. And uh, we're also going to talk about a pile of other things, if we can hear each other. Anyway, right now it's time for... Voice of a Body Shop presents the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And it's now time for the voiceover extra news for May 14th, 2018. VO vulnerabilities. You know, voiceover is a tough business. It's competitive, frustrating, sometimes disheartening, and often lonely. To pile it on, you're also vulnerable in four very big ways, observes our great friend Dan Hurst, who is a seasoned VO pro 
who has learned how to overcome those vulnerabilities. And in an article now at voiceoverextra.com, Dan shares what he's learned, which is quite a bit. A successful career takes some talent and a few breaks, he tells us, but overcoming your vulnerabilities will insulate and strengthen you in your drive to succeed. So what are those challenges? Well, number one is relationships. Dan notes that it's hard to establish ourselves as part of a client's team. The very nature of our business makes us a simple disembodied voice for most of our clients. It's not personal. When they decide to change, the voice actor is expendable. What to do, Dan advises, is to start building relationships with existing clients. If you do it right, you'll have them on your side, even to the point of becoming your advocate in finding new clients. Number two is marketing. Dan says that too many of us confuse sales with marketing, and they're quite different. Sales is a sales call, an email, snail mail, phone call, or whatever, sent cold, and the closing rate is low. So the answer is marketing, which is what you do to get the sale. Now, this involves research, discovery, timing, and connection. For instance, is the prospect really right for you? Do you really know what the client needs? And are you truly the best answer for those cl that client's needs? Now, according to Mr. Hurst, marketing is the art of finding clients that need your voice. And there's no way you can discover that until you've done your homework. Vulnerability number three involves voiceover genres. We try to be all things to all people, Dan observes. So stop it. If you're going to carve out a niche for yourself, focus on what you do well and perfect that. Be the best at what you do because the best clients hire the best talents. And vulnerability number four is productivity. How do you handle business? How do you use your equipment? And how and when do you improve your craft? Overall, Dan says, success in VO takes heart, determination, passion, and knowledge. Go for it. In the article, Dan offers many more suggestions on how to succeed, and you'll find it all now, plus much, much more at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Definitely some very important words there from our good friend Dan Hurst, who's probably one of the smartest guys I know in voiceover. You've met Dan a bunch of times, haven't you, George? I know I've met him once. He's definitely connected to me in the world of social media. Yeah, he's, he got, he's got it down. But those are all great tips there for uh, making sure that you are successful in your voiceover career. All right. Well, we're going to talk about, we've got a, we've got a question from our, from our voluminous audience, and we've got uh, some stuff about uh, isolation. So we'll talk about that coming right up on VoiceOver Body Shop. Dan Nactrab will be with us shortly, so don't go away. Nactrab. <laughs> Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voiceover Body Shop. I love when they talk BS about the O. Man, there's one show that I can't miss. It's called VOBS. And a lot of people are like, VOBS? What is that? That is BS about VO. And I love VO. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. You're listening to VOBS. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. That good old-fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. All right, what question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? Do you really want to? Of course you do. Well, we have a great answer to that question. Take VO2GoGo's free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right. It's free! It's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, 
the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class taught by VO2GoGo's David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? It's free. Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Go there now. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. You know, it's all about audio. That's why we're doing a TV show. It makes total sense to me. Uh, but as someone once said, who's going to want to watch a TV show about home voiceover studios? Well, seven years later, here we still are. Uh, and if you need help with your home voiceover studio, because trust me, I understand if you've not done it before, it's not easy. If you don't understand the basics of what goes into a voiceover studio, what you're even supposed to do with the software, how do you start? Well, you could go online and say, how do I start? And you'll get all sorts of answers from people who are experts in one studio, their own. So why don't you work with some guys like us that can help you get started with your home voiceover studio, or if you have a problem. And if you have a problem, you can go to me or you can go to George. So if you we'll start off by saying, George, if they want to talk to you, how do they do that? Well, you can book time with me or get some of my audio stacks or anything else at georgethetech.com. Or if you like short domains and you're a geek like me, georgethetech. How about Dan? Where do you find you? Well, you'll find me over here. You'll find me at Home Voiceover Studio. Dot com. That's the best place to find me. And uh, you can drop off some audio. Like I said, I'm going to start charging for my audio samples pretty soon. If you're going to go into the uh, the specimen collection cup, you know, I think it's going to be like 25 bucks. But Get yours under the wire. Get it in now. Now! Get it in now! Before June 1st! Anyway. Well, we got a question tonight. So why don't I read that question, and we will answer that question. Then we'll talk a little bit about isolation. Uh, from Nick DeTore. He says using an, he's using an AT shotgun mic with the Scarlet 2i2, Audacity for the DAW, and for, it's he's doing it for an audiobook project. Here's he the question. The AT-875R? The AT shotgun mic, that's all he says. He did not specify which particular AT shotgun mic that is. That's but, sort of like saying I'm using a hammer to hammer nails. Is that's right. Yeah, which, which you can do with some microphones. But anyway, uh, here's the question. Would you prefer th to use the roll off on the mic, 90 hertz, I think, or a noise gate or both to mitigate flight path noise? Well, there's a real easy answer to that one. Um, if you're doing an audio book, guess what? You're not doing it live. You know, you might think people might be watching your audiobook live and listening to you narrate it, you're not. That's why we have editing. So if you're in a flight path, you got a couple of questions, but it, it raises a couple of questions, which is one of the questions we'll talk about tonight, which is about isolation. If you are hearing airplanes, you have not isolated yourself very well, nor have you located where you're living very well if you're trying to do voiceover. So uh, a noise gate is not going to help when a when something is flying over your house, uh, 
because it's going to overwhelm you. And generally, it's going to come within the range of your voice. George, what do you think? Exactly. Well, good. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's yeah. a lot of different possibilities. I mean, you could use a noise gate, but it's not going to help because that's going to throw everything off. And if you don't know how to set it, it's a real pain. And now he's talking about using the uh, the bass roll off, the high pass filter on the mic. So obviously it's an AT shotgun mic with a, with a roll off uh, pad on it. Does that help in the description at all? I don't know. I mean, if it's an AT4073A, it does actually have a switch to roll off low end. But as a rule, if it has a switch to low, roll off low end or low cut, turn it on. It almost always helps. Um, but that's not going to solve the whole problem. Just like Dan said, if the noise is that severe, if it's, say, aircraft passing within a quarter or to a half a mile of your house, it's not going to matter. The sound is so pervasive, so loud, such a wide band noise. It's just going to be heard. And if you live where I used to live, which was near LAX airport, <laughs> that noise is every two minutes. So it would dramatically slow down your productivity recording an audiobook. book. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's either time to move or time to build um, isolation. Um, and if you're doing audiobooks, chances are, you may not be making the money to do either, um, but you know that's an assumption. Um, but you know it, it's a challenging situation, no matter how you slice it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I I would always think that you know you live where you choose to live, and if you choose to live where you can't do what you want to do, I suggest you move somewhere else. Uh, never rely on technology to uh, solve these problems. You want to you want to. You want to be as isolated as possible, which gets us into this discussion about isolation. And what does it take to create good isolation for your home voiceover studio? Um, if you usually when somebody you know contacts me, and I'm sure you probably tell them the same thing, I say, say, do you have a closet? Uh, I still know a lot of people making a lot of money next to their hanging pants and dresses and shirts and underwear and socks and shoes and stuff uh, because it's the best place to record it. Actually, in many cases, better than some of these booths, like this one here. I'm not, we're, we're still not sure whose booth that is. But if you recognize the one with Darth Vader in the corner here, uh, you know, that will, that will help. Yeah, if you send us a picture of your booth, put your name in it. Yeah, yeah would, that would be a big help. Just a... Uh, just yeah, that one was emailed to us, so I'm not exactly sure. But uh, it's important to uh, to understand that isolation is number one. Now, we always talk about what are the three main things you've got to deal with with a home studio. Number one is proper acoustics, and part of that is isolation. You've got to be able to prevent noise from the outside from coming in. And there are lots of ways to do it. One of them is with a booth. Uh, and that's expensive. And when you're starting off, you don't invest in something. Well, no, that's George. But uh, <laughs> uh, also expensive. Also very expensive. No. Um, but uh, the the thing is, is that if you don't want to spend that kind of money when you're just starting out, uh, unless you are an established talent and you're making a lot of money and you can afford to make that investment. And that's not a judgment call. That's a, that's a pretty simple thing to say because they're not cheap. Now you could build yeah, one. Maybe your uncle Michael Michael Bloomberg. I mean, who knows? It's it's whose? Maybe your uncle is Michael Bloomberg. Maybe, you know, or all sorts of people. If your uncle is Michael Bloomberg, please give me a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, chances are you might be in broadcasting already, so you may have the, have the budget to do that. Um, so you've got to keep sound from the outside out. George, what's the best way to create an isolated environment in your opinion? Um, it requires a couple main things. One is airtight seals on all doors, windows, and everything. Every seam, everything has to be airtight. Two, you need to have mass, air, mass. So you have to have a layer of heavy mass an airspace 
and then mass. So the outer, outer area has to be heavy, the inner interior has to be heavy, and the space between has to, there needs to be a space in between those two layers for the sound to um, basically dissipate. And that gap is usually filled with loosely, loosely packed insulation to help suck up some of that air uh, sound that gets through. Those are two of the main things. And the third thing is decoupling. So the structure that you create, if you're building something that has these properties, that entire thing has to be decoupled from everything else. What does that mean? It has to be sitting on little rubber pads or hockey pucks or something, and then it has to be not touching the ceiling or the walls of the, of the room in which you're building it. That, that decoupling will help you reduce the low frequency noise that gets in there from rumble from jet aircraft or motorcycles or trash trucks, that kind of stuff. Um, so those are the three tenets of soundproofing and the rest is all the details. Yep. And, you know, and, and those details, there's lots of different ways to do it. That's why, you know, if you live, say, in the Northeast or not here in Southern California and you have a basement, usually that will give you two sides that are very strong that are not letting any sound in. Then you just have to worry about sound coming in from, you know, people walking in the kitchen with their earth shoes and, uh, and various other uh, noises that come from the house. But it prevents a lot of outdoor noise, and that's really important, you know, leaf blowers and those sorts of things. So isolation is prime. The best closet to have is an interior closet, one where you don't have an exterior wall on that closet. So if it's like a coat closet in the middle of the house or something like that, that's a good place to do it. And it has to be big enough, of course, for you to, to move around it. But you can't do it out in a big open room unless it's a really quiet neighborhood. If it's something facing your backyard, that sort of thing. So I think it's important for people to really consider these things instead of how do I get rid of this noise? Get rid of the noise physically. That's going to save you a lot of work and time on the back end trying to fix it in post. Doing live, you know, and doing voice tracks at home. Remember, you're recording this. Everybody thinks, well, I can just fix it in post. Do it right the first time and do what it takes to get a good isolated home studio in the first place. It doesn't have to be expensive, except for uh, for Nick at Diatori, who apparently has to move across town away from the flight path. So that would help a whole lot. Anyway, Dan Nectrab supposedly is standing by to talk with us here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and uh, we'll get to him right after this break. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. VoiceOver Body Shop. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Learn how to get rid of that. VoiceOver Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on VOBS.us. There. Let's introduce our guest. Dan Nachtrab, Nachtrab, whatever, is a premier talent the industry has repeatedly chosen to use for 20 years. Dan's voice has a slight gravelly sound to it, bringing a warm intelligence to each read. He's first and foremost a storyteller, a narrator with believability 
and honesty that draws in and engages listeners and viewers alike. Plus, he has the versatility of a trailer voice with an aggressive sound to cut through the clutter and in intimate read only for your closest friend would use for, to share a secret. His clients include Fox, NBC, CBS, National Geographic, ESPN, Monday Night Football, Animal Planet, Discovery, Family, History Channel, and the Weather Channel, rather Weather Channel, literally just to name a few. Let's take a look and listen to his stuff. Tonight, everything's building to one explosive event. Jimmy Fallon, Justin Timberlake, Dwayne Johnson, and the cast of This Is Us. You won't want to miss it. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, live from the Super Bowl, tonight on NBC. National Geographic and Katie Couric are talking gender identity. Your DNA is playing a role here. And exploring the science and biology. There are areas in the brain that correlate with gender identity. Gender Revolution, a journey with Katie Couric, premieres Monday, February 6th at 9 on National Geographic. During moments of excitement and stress, the heart of an athlete can pump up to 10 gallons of blood per minute, making it the hardest working muscle in the human body. But it only takes a single moment to break it. The frustration starts to show there. Wednesday Night Rivalry, Bruins Rangers on NBCSN. River Monsters, Mysteries of the Ocean. A special season, new night, Thursday, April 7th, on Animal Planet. Fishermen don't wake up thinking about yesterday's failures. They wake up smelling today's possibilities. Last season is history. It's a new day. And everyone's looking for the first catch. A new season of Wicked Tuna lands Monday, February 1st at 9 on the National Geographic Channel. Wow. Man, those are some of my favorite shows. Let's welcome to our show, joining us from, where are you, Dan? Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. All right. Well, that would explain a whole lot. It's great to see you. How you doing? It's great to see you, too. All righty. Well, that's a, those are all my favorite shows. There's no question about it. I mean, I, I, River Monsters, one of those strange shows that it's like, why am I drawn into this? <laughs> the guy is picking out catfish from a hole. I don't quite understand that. But uh, where, where are you from originally? I uh, grew up in Ohio, uh, born in Toledo, and then uh, moved around a lot when I was young. Um, yeah. My dad kept getting promoted in insurance. In Cincinnati. <laughs> and uh, from seventh grade to I was about 20, uh, uh, lived in Cincinnati and then moved up to Dayton, Ohio uh, to do radio at WTUEFM there. And, ah. uh, yeah, spent about 20 years there and then moved to Portland in, in 2010. Yeah, gorgeous city. It's like, it. it's like a high-class Pittsburgh. It's, <laughs> I, 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 it's the best way to describe it. <laughs> Growing up in Cincinnati, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, a rivalry there. <laughs> uh, just, just a little bit. But it's great coming into the airport because it's like coming into a spa. Oh, I love the airport. Yeah, that's like the nicest airport in America is the one in Portland. One in row, like seven years in a row. Now. Yeah. Now, I always find it fascinating to meet guys whose voices I hear every day. Yeah, I mean, It's like, whose voice is that? Whose voice? Is well, now I know whose voice it is. Do you find many people recognizing your voice in non-voicing environments? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Period. And that's one of the great things about it. I mean, it's why you like radio and it's why you like voiceover is that you, you just get to do your craft and nobody gets to see who you are. It's one of the, the benefits of it. So, yeah. What's your favorite show to promo? Oh, uh, right now, uh, Wicked Tuna is fun. Um, we're doing a lot of genius, uh, Picasso on National Geographic. Um, and then, um, doing a lot of stuff for NBC Sports. They're always kind of throwing weird stuff at me. Right now I'm doing this weird storyteller type folksy voice for the uh, 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 Roland uh, Garros series going on right now for tennis. So I'm trying to remember the name of it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's usually on the script from what I understand. So, yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard that before. All but, right. Uh, yeah, National Geographic keeps me very busy. So they, they, uh, they give me a lot of shows. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they do a lot of stuff. I mean, they're constantly producing things, aren't they? 
Yeah, yeah, I do about a session, at least a session a day with them now. Um, it's uh, in, in who knows what we're going to cut during that session, but um, uh, sometimes it's like one tagline, but the next next session I'm in for an hour and a half cutting multiple shows. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's really a lot of fun working with them too, because they allow me to uh, spread my wings a bit. Uh, whereas a lot of promo guys uh, do one thing and they kind of realized after a while that I have a little bit of versatility and uh, uh, they uh, uh, let me play. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's half the fun. <laughs> if, if you're not having fun, why do it? You know exactly. Um, all right, let's settle this once and for all now. <laughs> How do you pronounce your name? Was I doing it right? Smith. Smith. I was going to say Jones, but now it's uh, Noctrob. Noctrob is, is one of my favorite uncle says. Don't knock it till you try it. it. <laughs> so I was right. Yeah. You had it right a couple of times. <laughs> so, but in, in my, I don't know, since my teenage years, so we're talking, I don't know, 30 something years now, I think 19 people, I've been trying to keep count, 19 people have said it correctly the first time. Uh, 19? You actually keep in count? Like, all yeah. right, all right. Well, Uncle Charlie did it right? Day, you know, you're usually at a grocery store or something like that, and they read the receipt. And, Thank you, Mr. Dan, <laughs> they move on. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, I, is it is it a German or a Dutch name? It's very German. Uh, there's a couple of stories that went behind it that it um, uh, stands for uh, night troops. We ah. supposedly we were the supply troops at the end of the battalion that would come in by night uh, and uh, and supply the troops. Uh, so, but if you add different letters to it, it has different meanings, like night runner or uh, night grape. If you add a U, <laughs> uh, so. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of different nicknames that I get because uh, it rhymes with a lot of different things. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you think of German names, you think of Schwarzenegger. You know, what you think of it's, it's okay. Never mind. That's that's, that's a Yiddish joke. Anyway. Um, if you ever meet one of us, we're related. Okay, that makes that makes sense. <laughs> you know, now promo is such a, a, a narrow genre of voiceover, and, you know, and there's not a lot of people doing it, at least not at the level that you're doing it. What does it take to climb that ladder? Everybody wants to. Oh, I want to do promo. Not that easy. What, what did uh, it take for you to get there? It, it, uh, gosh, we, we have to backtrack quite a bit. Okay, go back. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, 2005, I get out of radio, uh, and I'm going full-time into voiceover, and I'm just doing your every workaday stuff, your car dealers, uh, the local carpet place, and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I take my first workshop with uh, Randy Thomas and Brian Lee in 2006, uh, down in Fort Myers, Florida. And uh, Randy and Brian and I just kind of hit it off while we were there. Um, Randy invited me over to her house and uh, with my family and spent a, an hour or two there and was just so amazingly open with uh, how she does things and, uh, and giving me advice and things like that. And it, it literally changed the direction of my life where uh, I wanted to do what she was doing. <laughs> you know, and, and um, so that is, she recommended me to Maurice Tobias, uh, and I started studying with Maurice about two, two and a half years. I worked with her uh, doing workshops and meeting amazing people uh, at these workshops, and I highly recommend workshops to each and every, everyone. She tells it like it really is. She does. She's, uh, she's you know, the voice whisperer, as they say, but, you know, She's the closest thing to a human Yoda I've ever met. Uh, she, <laughs> she's about as high, too. As she anybody. sees right through you. She really does. Um, and um, uh, she's just amazing with her insight uh, into, the, uh, into the world of promo and, and trailer. Um, and, and I started to work with her on, on a regular basis. Um, and, gosh, where was it? Um, she eventually told me at one point, because I'm still doing the car dealers and everything, and I'm, and I'm doing a decently a good income at the, same, at the time, 
but it wasn't work that I wanted to be doing. I wanted to be doing promo and trailers. So she said, eventually you have to make a choice. Do you want to continue being a journeyman or do you want to be a celebrity? Um, you know, among the, the promo trailer guys and, and, and women uh, that we all know their names. Um, and I kind of looked at her and she goes, now both ways of making a living are fantastic. Uh, the, the journeyman who goes out, does the car dealers and everything in the, in the e-learning and the industrial narration is a fantastic way to make a living. Uh, but when you choose to go the celebrity route, quote unquote, um, you have to focus in on subtlety and art, the craft of it. And um, it takes a lot of work to do um, to, and a lot of introspection as well uh, to, uh, to, to basically uh, <laughs> nail down the craft, as they say. Uh, so uh, around 2010 or so, uh, I moved to Portland, Oregon, and I started studying, or I'd just gotten on with uh, Vox uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, I did 190 auditions with them and didn't land a single thing, and so something was wrong, and so I just started to start from ground up again, so I asked around to find out who was the best beginner coach, maybe I'm missing something along the way, and that's when I got uh, connected with Nancy Wolfson. And Nancy, uh, she put me in a fetal position. Uh, she, she is a drill sergeant. <laughs> and uh, so basically she awoke that I was still doing radio reads at the time. I was still doing what's called a regional read uh, where you kind of force it, you add a smile and there's a little bit of sell to everything. Uh, and she broke me. Um, and gave me the ability to tell stories in my own voice, uh, you know, or at least start in that direction. Uh, and then within a week or two, I started uh, booking. I started booking with NFL Network. And then a couple of months later, I landed Chrysler uh, doing all their disclaimers for that. That went on for five years. So she was dead on. And then uh, 2011, I went in uh, to a workshop again and met the genius Dave Walsh, uh, who you guys have had on there a, a couple of times. And um, I was one of Dave's earlier students. This is well before his true tell. Uh, and I worked with him for two and a half years from 2011 through 2013. And, um, and I was doing a session two, sometimes three a week with him, uh, really trying to nail down promo. Um, and narration and trailer as well as working with him. And, uh, and he was the guy who f gave me the ability to see the story through a script, uh, to be able to uh, go into your gut and uh, tell it, the story like it should be told from the, uh, from the hand of the writer. Uh, and that is kind of how you do promo. Uh, no, we've worked with all the same people. That's fascinating. Because uh, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm working with Dave right now, and, and he's he's fabulous at what he does. And Dave's uh, a genius. He is. <laughs> you know, he, he makes he makes you understand yeah. who's writing it and what they're trying to get across, and and how do you make it sound like <laughs> you're the one that's saying it? Yeah. And, he, uh, uh, I I said that I said this to Nancy. Uh, once, but uh, Nancy builds your foundation, and Dave and Maurice are like the interior decorators. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, it builds the foundation of your house, and then and then uh, they come in and they they basically uh, correct your mind and put it in the right direction to make sure that you're telling that story appropriately from your heart. Uh, and it's a it's a pretty difficult thing to do, and um, that's why it's a, such a small club uh, to be in. And uh, and I'm grateful for it every single day. Yeah, I mean, I talk to people all the time, and they're like, "I want to do promo," and I'm like, "You have to realize that it's a a small cadre of people doing it. Who we can probably yeah. count on less than two hands." It's uh, um, it, there's honestly in the trailer world, uh, which is even smaller. There's about sixty people. Uh, who do it now? Put that on the scale of the NFL. There's what 53 people per NFL team. Right. Per NFL team, 
Uh, and so they, the, the people who are doing this are the elite in that area, and they are just amazingly brilliant. And promo, there's probably, I'm guessing, anywhere from 100 to 200 people spread out among all the 500 networks and things like that. Uh, and so it's an extremely competitive environment that uh, we work in uh, every day. And so you have to be on your game uh, each and every morning, ready to go yeah. and make it as, as efficient as possible for your clients. Yeah. How many sessions do you usually do a day? I usually, uh, I'm, I'm about four to five a day, but uh, who knows how many spots are cut during each one of those sessions. Um, you know, I still do uh, work for uh, industrial clients and things like that as well too. Right. Uh, and then the narrations come into play as well. It's just a mixed bag of stuff. Yeah. So it looks like the whole trick, as it is with anything in voiceover work, as we were saying, is to properly and convincingly tell a story and especially in promo where you've got you know this finite amount of time to do it how do you approach it uh i figured out the secret when i was working with dave and that was to uh study narration uh that is the foundation for promo and trailer uh so when you when you have the ability to see the long arc of a story and see the twists and turns of it as you go uh, you abbreviate that into promo and trailer. Trailer's even less than promo. Uh, but then, well, that's not exactly true because now in a lot of promo, you're just adding tags. So how are you going to tell the story inside of a tag? Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, so that comes down to research uh, that you do on each and every uh, script that comes in for an audition and or a show that you're working to make sure that you're following the storyline uh, as it goes. Um, and, and, and you know that you're involved in the story you want to be a part of the story at that point or at least reflect it in your voice so uh, all right if you're just joining us our guest is dan nachtrab uh joining us from portland oregon i will now say it correctly 17 times in a row <laughs> are you sure that was right nachtrab we have george on video george yeah well he's he's there george you're there right wow. No, I sure am. Okay, there you are. <laughs> the, I, I actually have video now. Yeah, it's real mind. video now. I see welcome, it. You're welcome to use it. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll try, and, try and plug that in. Uh, anyway, um, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Dan Nachtrab, and we're talking about uh, his, his job, which is being a promo and trailer and narration guy. And if you've got a question for him, Jack Daniel, who is sitting just to my left, and is in charge of our social media empire here, uh, will get any questions you have for him, because I'm sure you probably got a pile of questions for Dan about what he does and how you get into it and how do you become one of the elites that gets to do it. Uh, and he will relay that question to us, and we will ask him that question. And no matter what name he uses, he will answer that question. <laughs> anyway. Um, let's let, let don't open the door to that. <laughs> I, it's, listen, you're the one that opened it up, so we're just gonna leave it at that for now. Um, anyway, narration because this is it's a little bit different, although promo is narration, but you do a lot of stuff as you were saying for uh, for National Geographic, like you know, like and uh, what's it like to narrate a, a show like that or or a documentary sort of thing. The, uh, narration is the, the funnest part of the entire job for me, uh, to get to tell the entire story from start to finish. Uh, so the scripts usually come in uh, about the day before, the night before. I go through it, mark it up, uh, and the next morning, if I have time, I'll go through it one more time and just kind of see if there's any uh, bobbles uh, with the way the words are uh, you know, written, just to make sure that I can smooth it out before I get there. Uh, then we go into session, and then um, uh, I don't get the luxury of doing things to camera, uh, to picture, because um, I'm recording here in the booth. The one that's uh, the one behind me there, that's the one that's uh, been behind you the entire night. Uh, <laughs> and, and so I go in, uh, the producer's in my ear, ISDN, phone patch, uh, source connect sometimes, um, and um, the narration begins. Uh, one of the key things that I, I've learned along the way in the, in the trick and the process of narration is to make sure that you you have the images of the show that you're watching inside your brain uh, as you're reading. So not only do you have the challenge of script interpretation, making sure the words come out correctly through your head, you're also playing the movie 
inside your brain uh, as you read so that you are there with the, uh, the viewer telling the story as you go. Uh, and just the combination of all those uh, is, to me, is just the ultimate. Uh, I love doing narration. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it, narration. I mean, I think everybody wants to do narration, uh, you know, because it's, you like you said, you know, we're telling a whole story here and you want to be able to, to carry it through. Do you change styles between different types of productions? Is there absolutely, uh, and that's the fun part about it. I, over the years, I've kind of discovered that the for me, there's uh, basically two types of narrators. You have a reporter, and you have a character. Now, the reporter is kind of a detached read that just kind of lays in the background and fits the pieces of the narration together. They just give you little snippets to inform you of the next segment you're about to get into. And then there's the character narration, which is, you know. Uh, you can you can go back to like Waylon Jennings and the Dukes of Hazard, something like that, or <laughs> <laughs> you know where the, the the person is actually a character inside the show, uh, and there's a lot of that in reality TV going on right now. Uh, but for the most part, the the ones that I do with those kind of character narrators, I'm playing the part of one of the the team that went out and shot uh, the video. So you get the uh, you, you come in from the perspective of one of the cameramen or the producer or the director uh, in, in reading from that perspective. So you're still doing, uh, you know, the, the acting part of finding the, the place and who you're talking to and, and where you are in your mind uh, for the character reads. Uh, and depending on the show, that character uh, comes about. Um, uh, you know, it, and that's part of the fun part of the job too is developing uh, those characters where you can add a little grit to your voice uh, or tighten it up or, you know, make it a little bit brighter so you sound a little bit younger and you're part of the 25-year-old uh, camera crew that's out. Yeah. So, yeah. You ever do one with a with, with a little bit of a drawl, like for some, uh, some nature Lee, films Lee and stuff? Guy, I got one season. They've been changing narrators, I think, every season. Uh, but Live Free or... Uh, live free or die on National Geographic, and I was I was his mountain man. Yeah, and I was narrating the whole show like this. <laughs> 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 you know, and I did it as a lark in the first section in in the first session, and they're like, "No, do it!" And so, it, 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 a whole season went by with that voice. So, yeah, it was kind of fun. Cool. <laughs> well, and there's probably more opportunity in narration work than there is obviously in trailer and promo and, and, and that sort of thing. So how does one really find their way into, into doing more narration work? Uh, just the auditions that come in through your agents. Um, as I was coming up through the ranks, uh, you know, going from my local agents to the, to Los Angeles and then, uh, on onward to New York, uh, with each of the, uh, agencies that I jumped to, um, let's just it would be honest, the quality of the work increased. Uh, and so you would, you know, my whole marketing campaign, and this will this will irk a lot of people, but the way that I market is just have a decent website that people can visit, uh, but win auditions. That's pretty much been the whole thing for me. Uh, get good enough that, you know, when they hear the audition, they can't deny it. And so you, you get the gig that way. Um, uh, you know, but with the way the competition is, you know, uh, working at this this kind of level, um, uh, you've got to be on your game. So uh, there's no, you know, there's no second place, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> do do you, you do affiliate work? I just started. Tell us about uh, it. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to do it for like seven, eight years, something like that. And the way the career was just going, I just didn't have time to, uh, to get into it. And then there's this guy I met on MySpace a long time ago by the name of Eric Romanowski. Um, and he does a lot of imaging work and stuff like that. And um, uh, I found out he did affiliate stuff. And I contacted him, you know, and I, I liked the work that he was, uh, the demos that he had up. And uh, so we, we put one together. And um, a few months later, uh, CESD brought me on. And then now I've got two clients right now going already. So it's, a, it's an exciting little thing. Uh, and it's, little, it's promo again. Uh, so I get to tell these stories even more now. So. Yeah, really. Now, now let's talk about the, the golden handcuffs part of this. Uh, yeah. You know, we get a oh, lot. Yeah. We, we, now that, 
Go for it, George. Oh, no, I said, especially now that you're doing affiliate work, the, the hand tops, handcuffs change. Well, uh, as far as my uh, life goes, I'll, I'll be honest, I've had one vacation since 2006. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was just last month. We, uh, we, we took off to Hawaii and everything was okay. We did Source Connect from the hotel room and it get a little shorter. It was it was wonderful. Nobody died. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Nobody <so>. died. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and so we made it back, and and and, uh, and everything just resumed. But as far as affiliate goes, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm too uh, green into the business uh, to. But I never leave really. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of sad. It's already <laughs> that, that's normalized. <laughs> so. But with the way tech is right now, you know, the, the freedom is, uh, is is coming back. Yeah. So I can do that again. Yeah. Again, if you're just joining us, Dan Nachtrab is our guest. We're talking about promo and narration and all this kind of stuff. So that, that sort of begs the question because the people are always asking me about, well, how do you record on the road? Well, unless you're Dan Nachtrab or Joe Cipriano or one of these guys that has those golden handcuffs, why bother except you know to to do auditions and stuff like that I, yeah i you know i i used to i just called george <laughs> tells me what to do you know, i've been working with george uh early days of the vobb uh you know he would give me advice way back when on the on the board of how to set up the booth back here and um I got the ATS panels in the booth because of George, and then George later hooked up my Pro Tools rig. Uh, this is not a giant plug for George. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a giant plug for George. That's the whole That's idea. BOBS.TV is a giant plug for George. I, I'm really not all that much of a guy. So, uh, you know, compression, EQ, stuff like that. I have no idea. Um, uh, he he just he hooked up a stack for me that I can activate a, a promo sound, uh, a commercial narration sound, or a raw sound just by the click of a button. Uh, and and I've been using that system now for God what now five six years. So uh, and and it works. So I don't mess with it. So. All righty. Well, if you got a question for Dan, <laughs> throw it in our chat room, and uh, we will get that question to him in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these incredibly important announcements. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs, an all-new American crime story tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. You know, all good things must come to an end. And at voiceoveressentials.com, it's the last day for these great sale items. The most popular products are rarely on sale and never before at these spectacular springtime sales special prices. Tomorrow, starting May 15th, it's back to their regular prices. So don't delay. At this moment, their special springtime bundle price for the voiceover dream package of a VO1A microphone, VO1A pop filter, and MicPort Pro USB preamp is just $498.54, a $50 savings, and a savings you do not want to miss. And you can save $10 on their always sold out multicolor LED voiceover recording sign. But that too comes to an end tomorrow too. Order now before it's too late. The voiceover dream package of a VO1A microphone, VO1A pop filter, mic port pro, just $498.54, a $50 savings, and save $10, $10, on their multicolor LED voiceover recording sign. 
VoiceOverEssentials.com. Everything you need for great VO studio stuff at great prices. Thanks for joining us once again for another episode of Voice Over Body Shop. Learn the latest in voiceover technology, business, and good old-fashioned acting. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. All right, we're back. We're talking with Dan Nectrab about promo and stuff like that. We got a lot of audience questions, don't we, Jack? We sure do. All right. Well, Mr. Whittem, your video has returned. So take it away with question number one. All right. Wow, it is working. It's a miracle. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> let me get down to those questions here because, yeah, we got a bunch of them. Um, Paulo Lineweber first. You got it. All right. Car uh, curious about documentaries specifically. Are there many women doing the narrations? How does a person get noticed? Do you need an agent? Those are the, it's a three part question. So let's just start with the first one. Are there many women doing the narrations? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, okay. not as many as the men, uh, but friends of mine like uh, Roberta Solomon do quite a bit for Smithsonian Channel. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, ladies study Roberta. Um, and, but it, as far as the opportunities go for the national stuff, uh, the New York, uh, LA agents are, the, are going to be the ones with those kind of scripts. If you're learning narration and you want to start somewhere, contact your local PBS station. That's it. Uh, that's how I started. I started doing this little show out of Dayton, Ohio at Think TV called Our Ohio, and it was all about the farms um, in Ohio and um, in the agricultural business. And they would talk, you know, weird things like buffalo farmers and stuff like that or craft <laughs> brewers or, you know. But that's how I got my start doing narration and learning. They were just little 15-minute clippets. Uh, and I would, um, uh, and, and it taught me the arc of the story. Um, and so that's where you begin, begin locally, um, and start to work out the kinks and work with a coach to, uh, to help you with that as you go, watch your stuff back. Here's something that I, that I discovered a while back too, that I've, I've recently found out that not many people do. When you get a piece that you really like that you did, keep it, keep it in your, on your computer near you so that you can recall it later and use it as an example. So if you find yourself in a situation that's similar to, or you got an audition that comes in that's similar to something you've already done, go back, listen to it. Your next read will get even better. Uh, and, and then continually build upon that by using your own work as a reference to fall back on. Uh, but, uh, and that's what I did with uh, the PBS stuff through the years, so. All right. Well, Harlan Hogan actually has a question. What? Harlan actually asked, and then there's a, a partial question for George, too. Uh, he I found says, the Randy Thomas workshop from 2006 on Harlan's website. Ah, uh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so he, says, he says, Dan, can you talk about doing promo trailer work on the road? Well, you say you haven't taken a vacation, but you've obviously had to go on the road and visit relatives and stuff like that, haven't you? Yeah. Or, uh, how are you I, set up for that? I, I talked to my uh, manager, Jason Marks, um, about how to do this, how the other guys do it. And he kind of basically said there's a system where you record, you set aside four hours in the morning on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you throw as much as you can in at that, on uh, those time slots. And then, um, uh, and then that gives you the freedom to do your vacation, uh, you know, outside of those hours. Um, but it's just like everybody else's rig. Uh, I have uh, I have an Apollo Twin that I use USB into a, a, a laptop with Source Connect, uh, and then if if, if the uh, the Wi-Fi isn't strong enough, I just use the data off my phone. Yeah, uh, and it's it, usually better. <laughs> yeah, it's seamless. It's uh, you know I was in Hawaii doing New York sessions, uh, you know, a few times a day. Yeah, it was nice. And you and you use a four sixteen. I take it on the road. 
Yeah, yeah, I just take, for the most part, this is the mic that I use. I use the uh, the Neumann in the back there for narrations and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, All right. And then, and then George, Harlan wants to know if you can talk about Jim Tasker's experience with the Porta Boots. Well, um, I can't because I'm not Jim, but <laughs> um, he uses it. And he's used one for quite a long time. Um, so, and I know that uh, Howard Parker, uh, another big, big name in promo, is also using the Porta Booth Pro. In fact, I just got him a brand new Porta Booth Pro after he used the other one so much, he almost wore it out. So, <laughs> that's, that's that takes a lot of use. <laughs> uh, well, that's, I mean, that, that's how much he was using it. So, um, yeah, the, there are folks like like Dan and Jim and using these these products because they want something consistent, you know, that they can take from place to place. Um, but uh, I was going to say, you have the U87 back there. Dan, do you work at your desk with your 416 as much as you can, or do you have to really do everything in the whisper room? Everything is in the booth. Uh, it's funny, it goes back to the stories that you were telling, uh, that you were talking about earlier. Uh, my booth came about uh, simply because a chainsaw was operating for three days straight outside my window. Mm. And that put me out of business. Uh, so this is, I don't know, right around 2006, 2007, somewhere in there. And so I slapped the card down and, and bought the enhanced booth. It's paid for itself many times over. Um, uh, and leaf blowers are no longer a problem anymore. Uh, and, yeah, and speaking about to, to dovetail and to, to circle around to what we were talking about earlier about isolation, the, the enhanced whisper room is their version of a double walled system yeah. where there's an exterior layer of material, an interior layer of material. And for practicality's sake, they, the, the space between them is very small. It's like a half an inch. They don't have a very big gap. Uh, but it, it, it do have two layers that are somewhat isolated from each other with a, a little rubber buffer that goes between them. Um, and it, it's, it, it emulates that room in a room thing um, pretty pretty effectively. Um, but now that you've got the ability to work outside the booth with a 416 and with some processing and stuff, it, has it occurred to you to just try doing certain things, maybe affiliate work outside the booth? Oh, I fantasize about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, why, not, why aren't you trying it? I don't it's know. It's, it's, you know, I've been in that booth for so long, it's like a womb. You just want to sit there. Uh, it's, yeah, I hear you. I hear it's you. one light bulb, the words in you in a dark place. Uh, I, the yeah. distraction, I, I don't know if I want the distraction. Uh, it's just something that I'm used to and I, and I like. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I get that. I mean, uh, um, those that could, shoot, could work outside a booth, that have a booth, I have found that very few actually ever do it. Or they, maybe they'll try it, but then they don't do it in the long run. It's kind of... It's interesting because, yeah, it's, it's, it creates a space you're comfortable in and it yeah. becomes part of you, the actor, all of it's a system. Um, Bo Weaver, great friend, he could build anything he wants. He prefers to go into a booth and walk away from the computer. He doesn't even have a monitor in there. Yeah. He, he wants to get away completely from the computer. So when he goes in the booth, he's now the actor. And when he leaves the booth, he's the engineer and the editor. You know, so whatever that trick is you have to do for your head, um, you know, you don't want to mess with that. So I get that. It, it goes back to the old, do you wear headphones or not argument? Uh, yeah. Exactly what you said. You know, it, your job isn't to engineer and hear yourself. Your job is to act. So why would you wear headphones? Uh, uh, and, and I used to be a headphone guy and lost quite a bit of hearing in my radio days because of the headphones. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Maurice changed my ways a long time ago. And now, even when I'm in session, I have my uh, my mic mixed out of the headphones, so that uh, uh, all I hear is the uh, the studio on the other side. I pull one ear off so that I can hear my natural tone, and have and have learned over the years to work with that. Um, uh, so it, it's yeah, just the same way as Bo said. Uh, now's not my time, uh, so I got you know I avoid mouth cl mouth clicks as much as you can. That's all I can do. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's just important to you know to stay hydrated, and, exactly and, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, and that's that's fascinating about headphones too, because you know we've been saying for years, don't use the head. Who are you listening to? The only yeah. person you should be listening to 
other than what you're hearing in the room yourself is who's telling you what to do. Yeah, it was, well, and that was one of the big things when I was making the switch from radio to actor uh, was uh, trying to avoid the old radio habits of wearing the headphones. Um, there's been multiple times where uh, I get into discussions with radio guys and they go, no, 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 I need the headphones. And I'm like, it's hurting you in the end because you're, you're paying attention to things that you shouldn't be paying attention to. Um, you know, your job is to act right now at this time. So do that. Um, and it seems to help the people that do do that to break those old ways. Um, All right. So. Jack Daniel has a question. You want to actually ask the question, Dan? I, I guess I could. You so. could grab the mic. It's up there. Okay. All right, Dan. Okay. Dan, Dan held mic is on. Okay. I'm standing on my tippy toes to read into this. Dan, that's you. You yes. taught me the value of listening to the best promo trailer voices online and deriving some value from close listening. Uh, can yes. you talk about this as a study technique for folks interested in doing what you do? Uh, uh, yes, you should know who the players are. Uh, you, you need to find out. Um, when, when I was living in Dayton, Ohio, and that's, you know, not New York or L.A. I've never lived in New York or L.A. And the only thing I could do was to study from afar. So if you remember the, you know, the, uh, the prime time uh, promo voice picture with Joe and Don and, and Ashton and all the guys, I used to study each and every one of those guys uh, as much as I possibly could uh, to imitate. Um, and whenever I'd hear them, I'd try to pick them out, learn their ways of doing things um, from afar. It was all part of the study process. Uh, and that's the, that's the, you know, the groundwork you have to do um, to find out how they do things and why they do things. And then also to also do your homework as far as studying uh, the cable networks to find out who's doing what now and why, how they're doing it, um, the vocal tones that they're using, are they taking artistic twists now? Um, when you, um, you know, like FX and uh, FX is amazing right now with their promo voices. I love them. They're mm -hmm. always they're so cool good. and artistic, yeah. and they they're they're you know the um, Americans. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're kind of <laughs> leading the way. Uh, you know, is is taking a, a different look at the voiceover and how to use it inside their promos. Um, you know, I give credit to Nat Geo. They let me play a lot um, uh, to come up with different tones for each of the shows. Um, which is, you know, just playtime for me. Uh, and then, um, uh, but then, we, we, and then you also notice that on the big networks, they're still using uh, the big voice guys, especially like ABC with Howard and Scott and um, uh, Mike McCall is still on there a lot. Um, uh, so you got to know who's doing what and where. And so you know the vibes that are going on for each one of those networks when an audition comes in. Uh, you want to be in the zone of the network. Uh, but also fit the story of the, uh, of the, the show, um, and that's the trick. So you have to do your homework. Um, so know who's doing what, who's doing where, and why. Uh, when, you're, when you're outside of those zones, uh, it's, it's, you know, do your homework. Yep. Uh, Trey Mosley has a couple of questions. George? <laughs> All right. And Trey says, question one, what's the one thing you haven't narrated that you'd want to narrate a Ken Burns documentary. I think everybody wants that. So <laughs> most of my narrations are about the end of the world. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter Coyote sounds like he's already been there to the end of the world. <laughs> and so you're I'm saying you're busy. Is that what you're saying? I told the story a few times online. I went to see Peter Coyote uh, speak one time with my friend Roberta Solomon. Uh, and he was doing a book tour and Roberta got the nerve to ask him about his narration work and how do you prepare for it? And, and he said this and I just, my jaw dropped. He doesn't prep at all. Everything he does is cold. Why ruin the surprise? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just went, oh, that's okay. There's a new bar. Uh, so we, we're working towards that now. Uh, Speaking but, of a bar, is the question below <laughs> that you wouldn't do one? Uh, Trey says, what subject is taboo that you absolutely wouldn't touch in regards to narrating 
Um, <laughs> I don't know if you would answer that live in front of the world. Maybe not, but uh, I don't know. Do, do you dare? <laughs> Most of the stuff you talk about, you know, or the, the narrations come out are either history or nature or uh, or political ongoing news. Um, so no, I'm I, anything is is open. Uh, really. Yeah, if, if I mean, <laughs> I start take rattling it? off the <laughs> they show an intelligent look at the uh, at the you know the subject matter. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, as far as commercial goes, yeah, there's a few you know things that I won't do, uh, yeah. but uh, because you know there's a level of endorsement with commercials. That's why the money's so good. Uh, you know, and there are certain things that I just I don't I don't want my voice attached to. Uh, so yeah. But I think everybody has their little things that they draw the line at. But uh, after yeah. seeing the movie um, Avengers: Infinity War, went to see that last no night. No spoilers. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. I was just thinking of one <laughs> of a of a of a, of a documentary you may not want to voice: Genocide. Why reducing half the Earth's population is good. <laughs> <laughs> half the universe's population. <laughs> In a related note, I did a series last year, or was no, it was election year, uh, right at the election. Uh, it was called Doomsday, 10 Ways the World Will End. And it was the greatest narration on the face of the earth because at the end of every episode, I was the only human being left alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I got this condescending tone at the end of every episode of going, you dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dumbasses, I mean, you changed your ways just a little yeah. bit. Still be here with me. I, I just noticed that we're in your studio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shows you how how close I pay attention to these things. <laughs> and it's what's really funny is it's a whisper room, superimposed over a whisper room, and I also have a whisper room. So I, I'm in the <laughs> here's a whisper room. Our backdrop is a whisper room. And you have a whisper room. I do. I'm going to clip this and send it to whisper room. They're going to love it. They're going to love that. All righty. Uh, Devox asks. Oh, oh wait, what? wait. Can I insert? Sure, go for it. You got a MarTech preamp back there? Yeah, the MSS10. Why? All right, uh, I had a 737 uh, that was blowing tubes all the time. I come to find out later it's because I was an idiot and left it on all the time. Uh, and so I burnt the hours on the tubes. And, and so I hated that. And I wanted to go to a solid state so that I could leave it on and not have to worry about it if I, if I accidentally left it on. Uh, and so a buddy of mine, Rick Riley, who lives up here in Portland, uh, he had one that was recommended from a, an engineer in Nashville. And uh, so he bought one. I, he let me borrow it for a couple hours. I set up a quick ISDN session, uh, went out, got a brand new 737 from Guitar, Guitar Center. Uh, their 30-day return policy is a good thing. Uh, and I did a back-to-back -back with one of my favorite engineers. And he's just like, the difference is so minimal. I couldn't tell one from the other. And, and that was it. I signed off on the MSS-10. I got to say, I mean, I... I have shot out preamps against the 737, and the one that I've kind of landed on is the Grace uh, M103. And it's it's because it's a channel strip. So if you are using any of the features of the of the 737, you have those features. Yeah. The 103. The bottom line is it's also solid state, like the Martech, and people can't hear the difference. Yeah. So the bottom line of that is the Avalon is a very transparent preamp. It's a Class A, and it doesn't have a sound. People think because it's tubed, it has a certain sound to it. It really doesn't. It's a very transparent preamp. So if you're going to bother having transparency, why bother having tubes? Right. It's totally not worth it. So, yeah, I've, I've heard that MS, MSS-10. I've looked at it and played with it. I like that it looks like a Geiger calendar with a little handle on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they build them to order, too. So, yeah, but they are, they are impressive pieces of kit, I have to say. I really enjoy it. And one, one of my engineers said, you know, at that price point, there really are no dogs. Uh, so, you know, so just, I, I recommend the solid state, uh, just like George said, it, you know, if you're, if you're a fool like me who leaves things on at night. 
<laughs> Don't do that. All righty. Uh, Devox asks, you mentioned having to break the radio read. What are some other habits you had to break and how did you break them? Or habits you acquired and how? Um, basically, everything had a sheen on it when I came out of radio. Uh, this is, we're going back to a Nancy lesson here, uh, Nancy Wilson lesson, uh, where uh, she just said, stop smiling, just stop it now and stop pushing the voice. Would you please just be real with me for once? She goes, with a read like that, it's no wonder nobody's hiring you. And then, oh, you know, I just, you know, the ego went up real fast. And then, um, uh, and then I remembered that I was paying her to tell me things like that. So I, uh, that was the thing uh, that I had to uh, break. And that took a process. It took two and a half, two and a half, three years uh, to do. Um, and the process ended one time in a lesson with uh, Dave Walsh um, where he started critiquing a few auditions of mine and um, that I'd already sent out. And, and I was just having a really, really, really bad day. And, um, uh, I kind of shut down and my wife sent him a note and just said, you broke him. What the hell did you do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. We got on the phone two and a, you know, two hours later, uh, we, we were fine, but, uh, I was, it was a really low point. Uh, it was February of 20, uh, 2013. Um, but, uh, the, I had a really bad month. I was uh, denied four agencies in New York. Uh, it was the year anniversary of a, a close family member's death, and then Dave decided to pile on me. Uh, <laughs> so uh, here I am at this low point, and he's telling me to uh, stop talking pretty. Um, and so that week I said, screw it, let's just give it a try. And I got this audition in for Organic Valley, uh, and it was their manifesto piece. And I um, decided to just read it in my own natural voice. And I booked it. And the, the beautiful wow. thing about it was um, it, it, um, the producer sent me the rough cut with my audition laid over images. And he goes, we're going to record in a week and a half. I just wanted you to see it. Well, I was listening to that and watching it like 20 times a day uh, so that I could get used to hearing my own voice that way. Uh, instead of with the sheen or the, you know, the, the perfect read. Um, and, it, and it was amazing. We did three takes and we were out. Um, supposedly it made people cry at the, uh, the, the event that they played it at. Uh, and then I became the voice of Organic Valley for two and a half, three years after that. Um, if you want to find it, it's on YouTube, uh, Organic Valley, who we, uh, who we are. Um, but and, and, uh, you know what I find so amazing about that is it, if you just if you didn't if you didn't have that direction and you didn't know it was time to break the sheen, wouldn't you just instinctively think it's organic valley? Everything about organic is happy because it's good for you. <laughs> You're at home. You know? It's nice. Yeah. So you had to go completely against the yeah. grain, so to speak, and you did that and you booked it. Yeah. And, and so that was a major turning point. And, and uh, you know, and, and Dave gets a lot of that credit. So does Nancy, so does Maurice. Um, you know, it was, it was a long process to get through that radio stuff and to, and to get to just yourself. Uh, you know, through the years of, of working at it, the imperfections in your voice give you a human quality. And, and even when you're in a character, you still have to envelop that character and make them human. And that human is also going to have imperfections. So for the, you know, the, the guys who are in radio, who have those big voices, um, who think it needs to be pristine, it doesn't. It's the exact opposite of that. So allow your imperfections to come through. Uh, that's what, you know, that's what separates you is just being you. Yep. Uh, and it was such a hard lesson. I will tell you that. It was a hard lesson. Yeah. So. Well, well, Dan, I have been looking forward to this all week just to make sure we get your name pronounced right. Knock Trump. Knock Trump. It needs an, a, you know, an umla in there or something just to make sure that it, it gets pronounced right. But thanks so much for, for joining us tonight. And uh, 
and letting us in on your world a little bit about promo and, and trailer and, and that type of work. And we uh, look, for, look forward to meeting you next time I'm in Portland. Uh, I think I'm coming down in August. Sometime. Well, then come join us here on a Monday night. Yeah. So, who knows? Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. All right. George and I will be right back to wrap things up into a nice, tight, tiny little ball right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. George? I think that's my cue. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to talk about our friends at Source Elements. They are the creators of Source Connect, and this is the tool to get. If you are wanting to play at the level of the voice actors out there like Dan Noctrob and others that have, uh, you know, stepped it up to that level where they're doing um, a lot of live directed reads, because if you're doing commercial, promo, a lot of that stuff is going to be live directed reads. And to do that from home, you, um, many cases are going to need something that allows your studio to be connected to the other studio live as though you're on the other side of a piece of glass. And that's what Source Connect does. It does it really, really well. The sound quality is rock solid. You're not leaning on any uh, tools built by Google Chrome or Firefox or a web browser. This system is tweaked and updated and designed to be reliable because it's its own built-in software, uh, its own software tool that's standalone. So this is the way to go if you're getting ready to play at that level. I definitely recommend you give it a try. Go to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial of Source Connect standard right now. Give it a shot. Don't worry, you don't have to have an iLock USB key to use it. Give it a try and tell them we sent you. We'll be right back. Having dinner tonight? How about having some VO too? Voiceover Body Shop. Have some voiceover with your dinner tonight on Voiceover Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. <laughs> Bye. Um, next week, May 21st, on this very show, Harry Dunn will be here. More promo stuff. We'll hear his perspective on it. Should be interesting. Uh, we need to thank our donors of the week. And those people are? I got one to hear from Andrew Kaufman. He's our, one of our regular donors. Um, I'm going to refresh my inbox here to make sure I've got definitely have the most up-to-date donors here because uh you know they come in during the show and sometimes i will miss some of the fresh ones that just came in so let me take a look here again yes yeah, so we got andrew kaufman eric aragoni if you watch our show with any frequency you hear these names pretty much every single week but add your name <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you <clears throat> uh, also antland productions uh a collectible collectibles i think that one came in the week before um so thank you so much for all of you who've donated you've helped us take the studio to new heights i mean we have sponsors but these donations are really helpful help in a lot of little gaps um and help us keep the show on the air no matter what happens all righty yeah and if you need help with your home studio make sure you go to georgethetech.com or homevoiceoverstudio.com uh, the show logs. The show logs are there. You know, we're trying to, I think Jack needs a little bit of help 
because he's going on vacation for a bit. So if someone wants to volunteer to help with the show notes, which will help you when you're watching it on YouTube, it gives you a a second by second breakdown of exactly what was said and when. So uh, that's uh, real important when you watch the YouTube replay on this. Uh, we're live every Monday night here, you know, around six o'clock, I guess. Um, so uh, if you're in the greater Los Angeles area and you'd like to join us here in the studio, write to us at the guys at vobs.tv. And right. if your live is too challenging for your schedule, six Pacific, no good for you. No big deal on YouTube shows also go up on Facebook. Uh, at Voice Over Body Shop, the Facebook page, and then the audio version. There's a podcast that's available. Just search for VOBS in your pod catching app of choice, like iTunes and Step Stitcher, 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 Slatcher, whatever. You, you One know, of those guys. Just search for VOBS. Yeah. All right, and make sure you show us your your booths. Uh, here we we got Dan uh, Dan Nectrab's booth right here, uh, and it's uh, you can have yours here. So send it in, in landscape, not portrait. We don't understand why people send them like that. Anyway, we need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to go go. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and Jake Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Well, we need to thank Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage every Monday night. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curtin, for getting us great guests like Dan Nachtrab. Uh Jack Daniel on chat room duty tonight. Thanks a lot. And the ever-present uh, technical and floor producer, uh, Sue Merlino, for sticking it out tonight and making it happen. And, of course, Jack DeGolia for the show notes and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it. I also thank uh, Maxine Dunn for letting me let <laughs> rearrange her living room so I could set up this little spot yeah. in front of her booth. Yeah. And Gerald Griffith for giving us some some really good technical advice tonight, too. So right. we really appreciate that. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Not an easy business, folks, but we're here to help you out. So join us here every Monday night on Voice Over Body Shop. We'll see you next Monday night. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or VO BS. BS. Yes. <laughs> good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>